something that you didn't have to do, Father God, but you love us just that much, Father God, and we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for, oh, Father God, giving us the shelter, Lord, even heat, Lord, Father God. Oh, Father God, that we take for granted sometimes, Father God, but those necessities, Lord, that others don't have, Father God, for our comfort, Father, we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we even thank you, Lord, for food to eat and fresh water to drink, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. And Father God, Lord, those, Lord, that homeless, Lord, that, that is out there in that element, Father God, we ask for comfort, Father God, shelter open up, Father God, that they may be comforted, Father God, even not necessarily in the United States, but all over, Father. Lord, touch, Father God. Provide for them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and Father God, we even asking you, Lord, to just continue, Lord, to have your way, Lord. Oh, Father God, in this ministry, ministry. Continue, Lord, to flourish it, Lord, as we are that beacon, Lord, of light, Father God, as we travel abroad, wherever, it, Lord, wherever you allow us to go, Father God, help us to continue, Lord, to let our light so shine. Touch your people, Father God. Strengthen us, Lord Jesus. Help us to stand, Lord, in the times that we are living in, Father God. Lord, encourage them, Father God. Help us, Lord, most of all, to encourage one another, Lord. Lift each other up, Father God. Lord, touch right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch the sick, Lord, and the shut-in, Lord. And Father God, realizing, Lord, this is the season, Father God, many are catching the flu. And Father God, we ask for healing, Lord. Oh, Father God, Lord, many have cancer, Lord. Heal their bodies, Lord. On kidney machines, heal, Lord. Deliver, Lord. And Father God, even, Lord, suicide, Lord, even, Lord, depression, anxiety, Lord. Lord, we ask you to bind that spirit, Father God, Lord, because you didn't give it to him, Father. We understand who did, Father. Give him that peace, Lord, that surpasses all understanding. Standing, Lord. Touch our pastor, Lord. Continue, Lord, to use him, Lord. Continue to strengthen his body, Father. Oh, Father God, continue, Lord, even touch our first lady, Lord. Oh, Father God, touch the family, Lord. Even touch his mother, Lord. In the name of Jesus, and Father God, we ask you, Lord, to just continue, Lord, to have your way, Lord, and those military personnel, Lord, that's in harm's way, Father God. Keep them, Father God. Bring them back home safely, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, touch their family. Family members here abroad, Father. Touch, Father. Oh, Lord. Well, Father God, all the wars and so forth, Father. Lord, let it stop, Father God. Realizing, Lord, you did say it's going to be wars and rumors of wars, Father God. But, Lord, have mercy, Father God. In the name of Jesus, uh, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord another praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Romans, the 12th chapter in the first verse. Romans, the 12th chapter in the first verse says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. <clears throat> and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is, what is the, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Amen? Amen? Amen. Victory, victory shall be mine. Mm. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Mm. Victory, victory shall be mine. Mm -hmm. Victory, victory shall be mine. Mm -hmm. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Ooh, victory. Victory shall be my own, oh, yes. Oh, joy, joy shall be mine, mm, yes. Mm, joy, joy shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Mm, joy, joy shall be mine. One more time, victory. Victory, victory shall be mine, oh yes. Mm. Victory, victory shall be mine. 
If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Ooh, victory, victory shall be mine. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. <clears throat> come on, we can do better than that. Come on, come on. Might be a little cold out, but it's all good. We're still here. We're alive. Come on, come on. We're alive. Come on. Anybody, am I, am I the only one alive? Come on, am I the only one appreciative of just being alive? Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. And I give God the big hand clap of praise you can. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. I don't care what nobody said. I don't care what's going on. God is worthy to be praised. Come on. We're deficient in praise. We owe him praises. Come on. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Well, I want to just thank everyone for coming out tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to break bread. I uh, thank Pastor for the opportunity. You may be seated. For break, to, to be able to break bread with you tonight. And I want to pray. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. I give you praise, honor, and glory right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, for your word tonight, God. I thank you in advance, God. I did get out the way that you may have your ways. Speak through me. Speak to them, God, in the name of Jesus. Let your word fall on good ground in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Heal, set free, and deliver tonight. Help tonight, God. In the name, give understanding tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you and we thank you, God. Lord, bless Pastor, God. Keep him and First Lady, God, and our first and the first family. Keep our church family, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the body of Christ tonight in the name of Jesus. I give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're going to do in this place tonight. In Jesus' name, and grace said, come on, come on, give God another hand clap of praise. I want to I talk to you a little bit tonight about a specific uh, topic that, that God gave me. But I want to give you a testimony, and I will say it's a testimony because it is. <laughs> Thursday night, I was studying for this message and uh, got up, went to bed late, got up Friday morning and had a haircut appointment. So if you know Wilson Boulevard, so I'm going down Wilson to go to my barber early Friday morning. And um, coming down Wilson, the car speeds up from the gas station, come across, try to like cross the street in front of uh, a, a, a truck was on my right and me. So two cars coming across. So... If I was looking any kind of way, if I was looking to the left or to the right, I missed that car by inches. So I would have hit him or her on the driver's side of that car. I would have hit him dead on. And the, the, the miracle is that also looking in the back, if someone was behind me, because I had to stop short with everything in my car, dropped to the floor. But when I think about it, the car, if it was a car behind me, it wouldn't have been no way they wouldn't have been able to stop if they were right behind me. So I looked behind me, there was no car. So I stopped short, and then the car on the right, once they and they and, and they were so in the car that was they were so in the wrong and they knew it because I beeped them that they just stopped and then they pulled off. So it was like, it was all like a slow motion to me. And so <laughs> that could have been bad. It could have been a pile up, really, really bad. 
And, and God said, because of this topic I gave you, because of the title I gave you, is why the devil immediately tried to attack it. And the topic is, I'm still here. Come on, y'all give God some praise for that. I'm still here. Because what the devil thought, if, if I could cause this accident, I'm going to dismiss that whole thing. Because it was that deadly. The, the potential of that was that bad. And when I went to my barber, I was like, oh, my God. I was telling him about it. He said, wow. He said, nobody was behind you? I said, no. On Wilson going down Wilson, it's always cars. It's almost like Blaine Boulevard. But God. Come on. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm still here. So you know the topic. And I asked myself, have you ever thought about why you're still here? There's a, we're in a new year. We made it into the new year. But there's a lot of people that did not make it into this year. So you ever ask yourself, because I did, Lord, I made it into a new year. But why? Not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm thankful. But why am I still here? Because I know my past. I know what God brought me out of. I know that there were better people. There were people that didn't better. They were better than me. They act better than me. They didn't do as much wild stuff as I did. And they ain't. Okay. So why me? And God said, because I have need of you. I know your heart. And I need people to make a difference in this world. So God said, this year, you're still here to make a difference, Amen. to be effective, right. to be salt of the earth, light of the world, to be example. I got grandkids. I got a grandson. I got nephews to be an example. He said, that's why. I gave you the business almost 20 years ago and you had no business license at all, meaning that you didn't go to store and go to school to learn how to run a business. He said, but I told you you were ready. And 20 years, almost 20 years later, you're still in business successfully. You're the light. Amen. And nobody else in your family going down that you can remember had owned their own business. Okay. Not legally. <laughs> so God says, so you're the soul, you're the light. To be an example. To hold up the bloodstained banner. See, I, I know, I, he, God said, I understand that, that no matter what. See, I know what I brought you out of. I know you're not going to walk away from me because of a bad circumstance, because of a situation, because of a problem. I know you're not going to leave me. You know I'm not going to leave you because I said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. you. You know that. But there's a lot of believers know that. And God said they still... Leave me. That's why God looks on the heart of man. Come on. That's why God said, I'd rather you heart or cold. If you lukewarm, I'll spew you out. Old English word for spit you out. That's why God said, I'll turn you over to a reprobate mind. Because folk want God to bless them. And when they get the blessing, you don't see them no more. God, ain't, God, you ain't going to pimp me. That's what God said. That's, that's basically what that is. You shouted when you needed the house. 
after you got the house. Well, after all, the only day I can stay home to clean it is Sunday. But you was here every Sunday before you got the house. So, so, so things, you know, are really, really messed up all over the world. Stevie Wonder can see that. Ray Charles too. So God looking for, as the Bible says, true worshipers. So if we say true worshipers, that means it must be fake ones. I said, God, help me to be a true worshiper. Help me to have a daily heart of repentance. Help me if I mess up to get it right quick. It don't matter whether I'm right or wrong. It don't even matter. I want to stay right with you. One of the things that God showed me concerning being here and being able to make a difference is that there's a spirit of fear that's gripped or crippled the people of God like never before. And it is an untalked about thing, especially with men. Because men don't want nobody to know that they were scared of something. It's true. But God said fear has gripped the people. Turn to 2 Timothy 1.7. 2 Timothy 1.7. I'm not going to have you turn to everything. I'm going to move on. But I want to I wanna, I wanna show you. We're going to take a look at it, and I'm going to give you a testimony about some people that fear. They stood up to it, and God showed up for them when they didn't bow to it. Let me, let me know when you have it. It says, for God has not given us the what? Spirit of fear. So if God didn't give it to us, where did it come from? But of power. So we got to know we're powerful. We got some power. God said, that's what I gave you. He said, I didn't give you that spirit of fear. What I gave you was power and love. I love you unconditionally, not, not because of you, but in spite of you and of a sound mind. You ain't crazy. You ain't confused. Your mind is sound. So it's time this year because I'm still here. We got to make a decision this year that we're going to believe the word of God, just what it says. If it says I got a sound mind, my mind is sound. The devil comes to try to tell you, you crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. You ain't going to make it. We got to learn to talk back to that joker. That ain't what God said. God said I'm powerful and my mind is sound. Can somebody say amen? 1 John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because, and here's the thing about fear, we got to get. Fear has torment. Amen. Yes, there are believers that are being tormented yes. by fear. Yes. And they're not, they're not talking about it, but it's there. Just look around. They, they're threatening a government shutdown. You, you think that military families and they're not, there's not fear there of not getting paychecks? But Congress has used this government shutdown as an intimidation. If y'all don't do this, we're going to shut it down. 
It don't matter about all those people that's not going to get paid and going to be able to pay their rent. Because it's a spirit of fear. And people learn to use it like a weapon. We won't get to where it comes from. Because fear has torment. He that fear is not made perfect in love. David said in Psalms 23, verses 4 and 5, it says, Yea, so I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will what? Fear no what? Evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But, but, but it says, a valley of the shadow of death. So here's the deal. David said, I'm not going to fear no evil. Because one, it's just a shadow. Okay. So, so when would a shadow, when did a shadow ever kill anybody? He said a shadow of death. And then he explains, I love it, he explains why he's not fearing. He said, for thy art with me. How many know God is with you? When you go to the doctor, come on, you got a lump in your breast, you got a, you got, you got a tumor, you got something you need, you, it's, it's serious. But God is with you. you, you if you own, if you're the only one, like you, you have nobody else to go to the doctor with you, you're never alone if you got God. God is with you. David said, I'm not going to fear what I can't see, for thy art is with me. And he's strapped. He said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He got a rod and a staff. They, they, they comfort me. Yes. Then he said, <laughs> thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. First of all, God was set up. See, if we deal with fear the way we're supposed to, God said, I'll set up a steak dinner right in the midst of people that don't like you. And here's why I'll do that. Because he said, thou anointest my head with oil. You'll anoint it. What is the anointing? The anointing is the yoke destroying, burning and moving power of God. So why wouldn't we want to be sitting at a table of people that need what we got? Well, they don't like me. That don't matter. I'm still here to do the work of the ministry. Jesus said, I'm not come to be ministered to. I came to minister unto and giving up my life for ransom for many. He said, I'm going to pay a table before you. Another translation says, a seven-course meal in the presence of your enemy. He said, I'll make your enemy your footstool. No fear here. Not this year. Give God some praise right there. Come on. Y'all know the old saying. Y'all know the saying when people say, hey, man, stop playing. That scared me to death. See, words got power. We got to watch what we say. We just say stuff. <laughs> no. Everything. God spoke everything into existence with words. Let there be light, and it was light. So if we are joint heirs and heirs of God in Christ Jesus, come on. We have power of attorney to use his name. So the word going to work. The Bible said death and life are on the power of the tongue, and those that love it shall do what? Eat the fruit thereof. So we're going to have just what we, what are you saying? Can somebody shout Glory. The acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. It's false. Tell somebody it's false. 
test result is false. Amen. You ain't going to get a divorce. That's false. Amen. The Bible says resist the devil and he'll do what? Flee. So that word flee means walk. It means run. See, we got to know what the word says. Basic instructions before leaving earth. We got to go back to the basics. If we go back to the basics, come on, we won't be so defeated in a lot of areas. And that is all of us. That's why God says, man, I told you, I gave you the book. I gave you how to live, but you got to read it. I told you, you, I told you, if you resist him, he'll run. How many want to put him on a run? Somebody shout glory. Luke 21, 26 says, men's hearts failing them for fear. Look, look at that. So it says, so, so David said, the shadow of death, right? But a shadow can kill you. Because if you're fearful enough, it says men's hearts failing them for fear. That's, and, the, and, and the Amplified Version says people. So that's man and woman. So, so, so that means that that's your heart blowing up. That's a heart attack. Because of fear. We got to get rid of the fear and walk in the faith. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's the opposite of fear, y'all. Yes, and it says, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. So their hearts failing because of fear for looking on those things which are coming on the earth, for always looking at CNN, for always looking at the news, for always looking at all the stuff that's going on. It's a lot of bad stuff, y'all. And, and if you can't take that stuff, don't look at it. Because, because, because you're not understanding that it's, it's engulfing believers. The Bible says, cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself up against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought under the obedience of Christ. But that thing is rising up to the level of the word because we watch more of that than putting more of the word in us. So we don't even want to go outside because we don't even want our kids to go to school because, yeah, they're killing people, kids in school. There's a lot of that stuff going on, but fear is gripping us Amen. to where we're ineffective as believers. Amen. Because if we don't go, if we don't go witness, if we don't go, then what are we doing here? Amen. If, we don't, if we don't go to the grocery store because... They shooting up grocery stores and we having everything sent to the house. How are we witnessing to anybody? Listen, we ain't got to say nothing because of the anointing. How is anybody just that you, we, we can get it off the, the anointing. You can get it off the films on us because <laughs> that's what the anointing is not for us. It's for somebody else. We got to get rid of fear. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Somebody say, no fear, no fear. Here. here. This year. This year. Yeah. Give God some praise right there. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Philippians 4, 6, after the Amplified Version says, do not be anxious or worried about anything. Y'all heard that? He said, do not. I mean, we're some, we're some of the most anxious and worried people. We are. We are. And we got the word. But the devil knows if you don't know it, it don't matter. You're no threat. The only way we become a threat is if we have the word in our belly. And the Bible says 
It'll flow out of our belly like rivers of living water. It'll cut right down through the bone and through the marrow. To the very intent, purpose of the heart. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything. Somebody say everything. Somebody say everything. So that means that God was very specific. So that means that you can't separate this. Lord, I'm going to talk to you about this. I'll take this to you. But this one here might be too, this is too big. He said everything. Amplified version says every circumstance. So I love it because give, no, give us no room to make no, 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 you know, no uh, excuses about why we're not taking it to him. Why are we worried about that thing? He said everything, every circumstance, and every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Continue. Somebody say continue. Somebody say continue. Continue to make your specific request known to God. God cares about everything that we care about. I don't know about you, but I need God every second of the day for everything. It says specific requests, stuff that you don't want to tell nobody else about. You ain't got to. God said, tell me about it. Because I'm the only one really could do something about it anyway. Specific requests to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Somebody shout glory. Come on, somebody shout. I'm still here. Acts 17, 28 says, for in him we live and move and have our being. We don't have to be afraid of nothing. We really don't. We, we move and everything that we are is him. He said, in him. Not in ourself. We live and move. We go anywhere we want. We could go because we got God. I'm not talking about being foolish. I'm talking about not being scared. Not being afraid. God, God was very clear. That spirit did not come for me. God said, wear this world as a loose garment in Christ Jesus. We wear it too tight. So when you listen to too much of the news, too much, too much of that bad stuff, and don't put some gospel on and listen to a word, you can get 24-hour, come on, they, they come on, Facebook and Instagram and, and, and all TikTok, all this stuff that's just spreading all this bad stuff. And if you can't, you put the word on. If you don't want to read it, listen to it. Because that's what we're supposed to be doing. We are ambassadors. We are walking epistles. That's what we're supposed to be. That's why you're still here. God said, we, God said we are in this world, but not of this world. We're pilgrims passing by. Let me give you a, a quick testimony about fear. What well, I experienced it <laughs> a, few months, last few, a few months ago. And three or four o'clock in the morning, my alarm went off in the house. And so, of course, three or four in the morning, ain't nobody moving or move but me. And ain't nobody supposed to move but me. For real. No, my wife right there, she 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 she, she, she got my back, but I'm gonna move. We, okay, that alarm go off, that means what? So when the contact breaks on your window or your door and you got an alarm, that means somebody trying to enter. So, so you know what we're going to do real quick. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm going to check. I'm going to, you know, I'm grabbing something. And, you know, you know. <laughs> I'm grabbing, I'm, 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 hey. Because here's the thing. Now I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to action. <laughs> so, I go to the alarm, and I look and see which zone it was. Find the zone, the window. Look at the window. Locks on it. Shut it tight. It was, it was nothing wrong. 
I go to all the doors, all the entrances, everything shut down just like I left it when I went to sleep. So nothing's open. But the alarm went off. So I told my wife, I said, everything is secure. I said, my daughter said, go to sleep. Y'all go to sleep. But she said, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. So now <laughs> I wasn't all right. You know why I wasn't all right? Because that alarm went off. I want to know why that alarm went off. <laughs> I ain't you talking about going back to sleep. I want to know why that alarm. Everything is locked. So you got to be careful about how you think. And, and, and the devil will get you out there. And when you we were supposed to, now we suppose I'm a believer. So I'm, I'm supposed to immediately think, okay. But I didn't. I was fearful. Because my family in there, I don't know. This line went off. I went upstairs. Everything is secure upstairs. So I, didn't, so I laid back down. Well, I laid back down. I didn't lay all the way back down. I'm up in the bed, man. Like, I'm like, you know, a sergeant, man. I got, I got things on, you know. I'm like, eyes wide open. I'm, <laughs> I'm sleeping as all out toss. And I'm like, man, I'm, I don't know. So then, you know, I had to, I had to so wait a minute. I had to come to myself. God quickly, he said, so if it's not natural, then it's what? Spiritual. It was an attack because nothing happens. It's been months ago. Nothing happened with that system ever since. So I, so I came to myself and I said, okay, let's, let's go. Let's go, devil. Let's go. So out there, what God, what the word told me to do, I put on the helmet of salvation. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. I gird my loins with truth. I shod in my feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I pick up the sword, which is the word of God. Amen. Sword of faith, which is the word of God. And I went through the house. I went through the house praying. I went through the house praying. And I went through the house binding and loosening. Because that's what we're supposed to do. And I resist them. And that spirit just left. Because even though everything was calm with everybody else, I still had it on me until I took authority. What am I saying? I was using the wrong weapon. The reason why it didn't go, because I had the knife and I had this and I had that. I was never going to beat them with that because nobody wasn't there. It was a spiritual attack, so I had to use the right weapons. The Bible says our weapons of warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty to pulling down of what? Strongholds. And when I did that, I went to sleep peacefully. Can somebody say amen? I'm still here. John 10.10 10 says the thief cometh not but to do what? And to destroy. So who's, if God didn't Give us the spirit of fear. Who gave it to us? The devil. It tells us right there. Jesus made sure he told us even before he told us what he came to do. A portion says, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and to destroy every good and godly thing in our lives. He brings fear. That is one of his best weapons against believers. It's the best weapon against everybody. Because I remember when I was out in the world drinking and stuff like that, man, I was so paranoid and, and all this crazy stuff, but it was fear. It was fear. I, I couldn't fight it because I ain't had the word to fight it. That's why when you know better, you, you do better. And we got something to fight what we can't see. Can somebody say Amen. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, be vigilant. Be sober. That's be alert. Be vigilant because your adversary, the who? The devil. It tells us he's not our friend. He's an adversary. He's a foe. 
He hates us. And if you ain't going through nothing and he ain't bothering you, you, you better ask yourself, do we think y'all friends? Because everybody I know, the devil bothering. And if you're here and being effective in the kingdom, you making a difference to one person, Amen. he's going to bother you. Because we're in a fight. Amen. Adversary with the devil has a wrong line, walking about, seeking who he may Devout. That word devout means tear up two pieces. Amen. That's why we ain't got no time to be sleeping. We ain't got no time to be fearing and worrying and, and being. No, we got, to, we got to know that there is somebody that God used. He's not a man with a red suit and no pitchfork. He is a worthy adversary. Yes. And God says, he looks at him, he, he wants us to see him like this, a roaring lion. That's who's after us. He said he's walking about seeking, waiting for us to slip up, waiting to plant something, to make us do something, go back to what we used to do so he can devour us. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith that we might withstand the wiles of the enemy. It never, nowhere in the Bible it tells us to fight the devil. It says fight the good fight of faith. Trust in me that I've already beat him. See, the fight is fixed, y'all. We already won. We're walking it out. The thing is, we, gotta, we, we try to make it to the end. We try to make it to well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what we try to make it to. Because God already, it's already done. We're walking it out. God not figuring out what's going to happen tomorrow. God is already in tomorrow, just like he in today. And he's still in yesterday. We don't fear him. We bind him. We fear the Lord. Proverbs 1, 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. It's the fear. See, the fear of the Lord is okay. There's a healthy fear. Proverbs 1 7 says, the Amplified Version says, the reverent fear of the Lord. That's the reverence. That's that fear. We reverence God. That is worshiping Him and regarding Him as truly awesome is the beginning and the preeminent part of knowledge. It's the starting point and its essence. But arrogant fools, despite skillful and godly wisdom and instruction and self-discipline. First Samuel says, First Samuel 12, 24 says, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart for consider how great things he have done for you. If you've done some great things for you, give God some praise. Come on, come on. If you've done great, some great things, give God some praise. We're going to take a quick look. Turn to Daniel. Quick look at Daniel. I want to show you these men real quick, how they didn't bow to fear intimid and intimidation. Go to 1 Daniel 3, 15, and, we, and, we're gonna, and we're done. But I wanted to show you. Daniel 3.15, when you have it, say amen. It says, now, what does it say? Now. now, if ye be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbutt, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image, which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that, was, that shall deliver you out of our hands? It's a familiar passage of Scripture, familiar testimony about Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. I mean Negro, about Negro, a Bendigo. <laughs> Answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of the hand, O king. So, you know, the, 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 the king, 
made this image, golden image, and he wanted everybody that's under him to bow down to it when they hear the music. And these three boys, these three men said, no. <laughs> they said, we're not doing it. We're not bowing down. Come on. Verse 18, right? But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Yeah. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fairy, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. I believe in spiritual numbers. Five is the number of grace, six is the number of man, seven is the number of completion. So he don't even, see the heart of the king is in God's hand. He the king over the Babylon and he the king over all these, all these cities and countries, but God is the king of him. He don't even know he used God's number to try to burn up God's people. Let's go. And he commanded the most mighty men, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fire furnace. First of all, for three men, why do you have to get the most mighty men? <laughs> Verse 21, 21. Then these men were bound. Listen to this now. They bound him, and they bound them in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments. I mean, that's pretty bound up. <laughs> and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent. And the furnace was exceedingly hot. The flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astounded and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Scratching his head. I can about see him scratching their head. He said, wait a minute now. Uh, did we cast three men? Let me see here. Bound into the midst of the fire. They answered and said unto the king, true, O king. He answered and said, lo, hey, bro, <laughs> I see four men loose. Started counting. One, two, Tree, four, <laughs> walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. Y'all got to get it. They have no hurt. The men that put them in there was burnt up before they was even at the mouth of it. That's how hot that fire was. And they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the most high God. Oh, so now it's the most high God. But before, let me see if your God can deliver you out of my hand. <laughs> come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and boy, that bad, okay, and came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princess, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, the king's counselors, the captains, the princes, governors, the princes, governors, captains, king's counselors. He went and got everybody. Everybody. Y'all got to see this. Being, see, see, when you're going through and when you come out, God will have some people that find out about it. Yeah, because see, you, cause see it's, cause we're, we're, that's the whole point. We're tested. To, give, to have a testimony. We are a mess to become a messenger. And the princes, governors, and captains, and kings, counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. How is that? I don't know who I'm talking to, whether you tuned in or came in or came in, but if your situation Feel like you feel like you're in a fire. Just know the fire has no power. 
I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the doctor report says. It may be a fact, but it ain't the truth. The Bible said, buy the truth and sell it not. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The fire had no power. Come on, I'm almost done. Nor was any hair off of their head singed. So you mean to tell me, hold on now. So you mean to tell me they, they hear, they, they hear didn't, they, 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 they didn't catch a fire like Michael Jackson did? I'm just asking. I'm, I'm just, so they hear didn't catch a fire. Okay. Nor was in here of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed. Oh my gosh. So, so the fire, remember how they were, and I'm closing. Remember how they were when he threw them, when, when he would get ready to throw them in there. It made mention of everything that they had on, all the clothes and the hat and everything. But they were bound, their hands was bound. So, 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 but they were walking around free in the fire. So how did it burn off all that stuff? That loosed them and not them. Y'all gotta see, y'all gotta see how powerful our God is. I don't care what situation or circumstance you get in, God will deliver us out of them all. Psalm 34, 19. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them. Somebody needs to shout better than that. Somebody shout all. Come on, I'm closing. Neither was their coast change, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Yes. Listen, you don't even smell like what you've been to. God said in his word that he will, he will keep us. Verse 28, then Nebuchadnezzar spake, I'm closing, and said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who both sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have the change and, and have changed the king's words. Oh, my God, he changed the king's words. God said he will restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust ate up. The reason why some of us don't look like what we've been, do, been through, because God ain't restored one day. He ain't restored one month. He restored the years. All the stuff I went through, I will have to tell you, because I certainly don't look like it. Because God said he'd do exactly what he said he would do. Come on, I'm closing. And have to change the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except the God, except their own God. Verse 29. Therefore, I made a decree. See, when you stand, you'll make a decree. You'll make the devil change his mind. that every people, nation, and language will speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces, and their bones shall be made a dungeon, because there is no other God that can deliver after, after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. The king promoted them. When you stand for God, and God, and you can say, I'm still here, and you stand for God, and we go to work for God, God won't forget you. So I won't forget your labor of love towards me. There is promotion. We serve a God of increase. Come on, come on, stand to your feet and give God some praise for his word. Come on, come on, come on. You can do better than that. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, God. I pray, Lord, that it fell on good ground. I pray, Lord, that they got something that will help them tonight. I pray that they this demolish fear. That fear won't rule in their house. They won't be scared in their own house, God. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you for what you've done tonight, God. Keep us in every way. Let every one of us arrive home safely, God. In the name of Jesus. Until next time. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. Give God some praise. Come on. And we'll thank God real quick. Thank you for the offering and the tithe we give tonight. Bless it. Use it for the kingdom and building up your kingdom in Jesus' name. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.